Hello and welcome to this edition of Minstrels on the Block, where we bring you the finest singer-songwriters in the Valley area. This week's special guest is Miss Kaylee Hammock. Kaylee, good to have you on the show. Well, thank y'all for inviting me. It's a pleasure. So tell me about yourself. Where were you born? I was born in Elville, Georgia. I've been there most of my, all of my life now, um, 18 years. But I was born to Mike and Connie Hammock. Um, I'm a well driller's daughter. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so that... Uh, as far as your, your parents are concerned, your, your, your dad drills wells. What does your mom do? She actually is a GD instructor at the local um, technical college. And what is that? It's um, GED is when someone doesn't actually successfully complete high school or can't. And they go back later and they actually do all the grades all the way from mama has some classes that are um, first grade all the way to 12th grade, which is senior year. And then you successfully complete it to get your GED or your high school diploma. Excellent. Now, are your parents musical at all? You know, my, my mom sings a little bit. Um, Daddy used to be in a band when he was younger, but not, not as much as everyone thinks. We just play around with music. We've never really gotten serious about it. What kind of band did, you, did he play in? Hi, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> he played in a rock band. Cool. That's the kind of man. <laughs> rock and roll, baby. So, now, what led you to want to do music? I started singing publicly when I was 13 and it was just for fun. It was, um, I, I got very nervous just like I do whenever I talk in front of people. But, you know, it, it got easier as I progressed in it. And then um, two years ago, I actually, I had a problem, a physical problem. And it was, I'm very competitive. I play a lot of sports, so I was never able to focus on music completely until um, I started having pains in my legs and my hips, and it got to a point that I couldn't run anymore. Wow. And basketball is very hard when you can't keep up. So um, I went to the doctor, and they, get, they got an MRI, and it, they found out that I, um, what they said, they said I had cancer. Wow. And um, the doctor said, we don't know for sure, but we think it's stage two. And I don't know if any of y'all have ever had a type of... Um, scare like that, a, a medical scare, but it changes your outlook on life. When you start thinking about, you know, I was going to do this when I'm 30. You know, I have so many years. I, I started thinking, I don't have, I don't have tomorrow. You know, you never know how many days you have left. So after that, um, I had major back surgery and we got a eight inch tumor out of my back wow. and it actually, you know, prayers were answered. It was benign, but at that point, you know, it changes your outlook. It makes you mature quicker. And I decided, you know, if I want to go into music, I need to do it now. And it set me on a faster track than I'd ever been used to. But it gave me the concentration I needed. Wow. That's, yeah, that's, that's probably the, the most intense story we've had on here. <laughs> well, uh, now, going back a little bit. You said you, you, you've been singing people in front of people since you were 13. What made you do that? What, what was the, the starter for that? You know, it's really funny, but um, my sister plays the piano. And my brother, I have an older brother and sister. Uh, my brother, Nathan, he was always into football and sports, so it made me want to push myself in sports. And then I found that my sister was musically inclined. She was amazing. She can play, she could listen to a song, go to the piano and play it perfectly, even better than the original. And she started singing one day and I was like, she's really good. And I started thinking, you know, I need to outdo my sister. You know, it's always the family rivalry. So, you know, I started singing a little bit around the house and everything. And it actually, um, the movie Elf with Will Ferrell, yeah. you know, the shower scene when the girl's singing in the shower. And um, it's, I really can't stay. I've got to go away. Um, I was singing that around the house. And Daddy said, Kayla, you can, you can sing. I was like, no, I can't. He's like, yeah, you can. I was like... <laughs> hmm. So I got into my first talent shows um, in Ellaville. It was maybe like 20 people out there. Got up there, started singing um, I Will Survive by Aretha Franklin. Choked on the first line. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible. I remember going home and I just started crying. And I was like, you know, bet, bet I can do a lot better than that. 
So, you know, now I've just decided whenever I do mess up, I mean, I'm human. I'm going to choke up. I'm going to mess up. I'm going to miss a line or forget a verse or anything. But, you I do know, that regularly. <laughs> <laughs> especially when you have a lot of people watching you or a camera in front of you. But, you know, I realized to not let that get me down, but to make it want, make me want to improve. Now, you write. Did, did your writing style change from before the cancer to after the cancer? I started writing when I was eight, and I never really sang it for anything. But, you know, looking back, all of those things, you never know how to write a truly sad or moving song until something makes you that sad or something moves you that much. And I think that it actually made me a lot better. And, you know, at that point in my life, I was mad at God. I, you know, I didn't know what I had done to deserve cancer. At, at 15, 16, I was terrified. Yeah. But I decided, you know, through that, I wrote a song called Addictive that I'll play for y'all in a little while. But cool. um, from that song, Sony Publishing, ATV in Nashville heard me. Nice. The vice president heard me, Mike Whalen. And now I'm actually working underneath them. I'm working with them to start working towards a deal and maybe, you know, anything that they can offer. But it's actually because of that I've gotten so many breaks, and it gives me a story that I can help other people, yeah. and it inspires me to do better. Now, for, for people out there, now, I, I'll ask you a, a, a variation of this question later, but for people out there, what? How did you get them to hear? What position did you get into where they could hear your song? Sony? Mm-hmm. Um, actually, I don't... Y'all should remember him. John Barry, the singer, Your Love Amazes Me, Kiss Me in the Car. Um, he actually heard me at a bar in Ellaville, Buck's Place, before it burnt down. He... He heard me, and he decided to help me along. So he got me up into Nashville at Beard Music Group and got me to record four songs, and Sony wow. actually came and listened to me. And that was how I got the hookup. You know, it's all its all about somebody helping you out. It is, yeah, networking and, and mm -hmm. all of that. Um, now, generally, what do you write from? What is your inspiration to write? Um, for Addictive, it was actually... You know, I realized that I could experience a lot more pain than I thought was humanly possible for yeah. me. And then I realized that the worst pain in the entire world is having your heart broken. Yeah. Because it's not something that heals, you know, in time. It's however you move along afterwards. If you sit there and just wait and wallow in it, you're never going to get over it. So um, I write a lot of music about my, um, my love life, like anyone that I've ever loved and they've broken my heart. Or, you know, I always warn my boyfriend that if he does something bad, I'm going to write a really mean song about him. <laughs> so <laughs> better not do that. <laughs> but, um, you know, I write about a lot of things. Uh, one of the songs I'm going to sing is about Elvis. Cool. So I, I try to use everything I can to inspire music. Well, now, that brings me to a question I ask every single one of my guests, and it's probably the most important question on the uh, show. Elvis or the Beatles? Beatles. Beatles. <laughs> Same answer pretty much every time. <laughs> Tell you what, let's hear some of Kaylee's songs, and we'll be right back after this. This is one of my first originals, and it's called Addictive. Um, you know, I had back surgery about two years ago. And getting over the painkillers was harder than getting over the overall surgery. And at that point in my life, I thought I knew what pain was. Thought I could take anything. Until a few months later, my heart was broken for the first time. And I realized that the most addictive drug in the entire world cannot be sold or bought or given to you after surgery. The most addictive drug in the world is love. So I hope you enjoy this. The way he closes his eyes The way he softly smiles It's so addictive Oh, 
both my heart and mind You're the reasons when I cry You kill me but you keep me alive And you're the worst kind of drug That I could ever get a hold of And you need me to love You're worse than any single sounds in the world When you're taken away I need you Lately, sobered up when I just want to give up. Here you come again. The brush of his hands is so addictive. Hello, and welcome back to this edition of Minstrels on the Block with special guest Kaylee Hammock. So, Kaylee, now you've you've got quite a few things going on, like now. Uh, so, tell me tell me a little bit about. Maybe even preceding what you have, what's going on now, but you've obviously got a lot of projects going on. You mentioned a little bit of it in the first segment. So tell me about some of what you have going on. Um, some of the biggest things I've done is actually some vocal competitions around here and Albany and other places around Georgia and all, um, Alabama. But um, in 2010, I did America's Got Talent. Um, I got a call back and then it ended. Um, let's see, 2011, I was actually flown to um, Dallas, Texas for nice. X Factor. And Texaco Country Showdown, I won for Georgia State mm-hmm. Finals. But um, actually, I, you know, I don't know if anyone ever saw it, but I actually got to go to New York because of Georgia 4-H. And I got to sing with Jennifer Nettles on the premiere nice. of Duets on ABC. So um, that was a really big point in my life. It was, you know, it's maybe 30 seconds on TV, but I'm still on TV, you know. (laughs) It was was a very exciting part of my life, and um, Jennifer was very sweet, and she she supported me, and she encouraged me about everything. Um, Luke Bryan is actually um, talking to me about different things right now. Very Um, cool. But... Right now, John Barry is actually my main supporter. He's mm-hmm. helping me kind of learn the ropes of the music business. Um, I'm not signed with Sony Publishing, but I'm working very hard to impress them and work with them and keep them happy. Um, I'm actually working with a band right now. Cool. And we're really excited. We're working really hard for it. But um, it's Kayleena and the County Line Band. Hey, I like that. <laughs> um, we've been working for about two months now, I believe, and we got our first gig is July 14th at Lake Blackshear. Cool. So if any of y'all around the area, come on out and support us. Very nice. Now, what? tell me a little bit about, I mean, <clears throat> it, it may seem kind of obvious, but where would you like to see your music go? What is your end game? What is your ultimate goal? That is one thing. Um, when you read books about songwriting and working towards a singing career, one that pays and you get some recognition, the one thing they always say is to set a goal and to write that goal on a piece of paper and you tape it on your mirror so you see it every single day. Put it somewhere you can see it. And I believe in life you need to do that. Anything. Have a goal so that you can work towards it. And my goal right now is it's not to get rich or famous, you know. 
money is good. Yeah. Having people know you, it's a great feeling, but I want to be able to touch people in music. Mm -hmm. I, I want to be able to change someone's life. Like that doctor changed my life yeah. when he actually turned my life around and I was able to run and walk again. I couldn't walk. So it just to have someone change your life, whether it is to just give you a different outlook on life or to stop you from doing something really stupid to yourself. You know, it's, it's something that I want to do. I want to change someone's life through music. Very cool. Tell me a little bit about your, your, your band project. Um, like, uh, I guess they're, they're all local to where you live. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me a little bit about some of your experiences in putting that together. Was it, a, was it fairly easy or was it a, a trial getting people together? Because sometimes, you know, having a band can be uh, <clears throat> hit or miss. Yeah. Um, well, it was very hard for me at first. You have to learn a lot of words. You got to um, really focus on helping the band because we're like a family. When you work with four other people at, at least three times a week, it gets to a point that they are they're your brothers and sisters. So um, I have four guys that I work with at least two or three times a week. And we just work towards making the most diverse and best set list we can. We play stuff from ACDC, um, Miranda Lambert, um, Driving and Crying, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, and then some newer stuff like CeeLo Green and different things, <laughs> that, <laughs> different things that everyone can get something out of. I want anyone that comes to my shows to listen to my music and say, you yeah, know, that's, that's really good. I like that, that song, even if they don't like anything else. I mean... I sing country, blues, rock. I rap to Eminem some. But, you know, we, we do a lot of things just to make everyone happy. But we're, we've been working really hard. And I believe that we've got one of the best set lists around here for now. Um, if we keep working at it, I think we can be really good. And we would really like all the support. Very cool. Now, uh, another question I like. You know, the, you know a lot of the, the point of the show is for people to connect with, with you. What, let's just say it's a, any given Sunday afternoon, you're walking around the house, you know, drinking tea or whatever. Uh, what are you most likely to be listening to on your, your CD player, your iPod? I'm a really big fan of like Pandora Radio because there's so many different things you can listen to. But my favorite channel, honestly, is Train. It's, I have loved their music since forever. So I listen to anything from them, Matchbox 20, um, even some Miranda Lambert, and just different things. I like lots of different genres and different types of singing. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have any CDs? I actually do. Um, we have what you would call a Nashville, an EP. It's mm -hmm. just four or five songs, but I have four originals of mine. And, um, you know, we're selling it. It's just $5 because there's not much on it. But we just sell it to try to make some money to um, fund the band. But Excellent. So after we're going to go to uh, one of Kaylee's songs when we come back. We'll tell you where you can get that CD and tell you where you can find Kaylee online and anywhere else. Be right back after this. Um, this next song I wrote about two years ago, actually, for Father's Day. Um, my dad is one of the biggest people in my life. He, he's done a lot for me, and he's the reason I'm in music right now, from him supporting me. So I wrote this song um, after my cancer scare, so I hope you all like it.
proud That's my biggest wish Daddy, don't cry I know you miss me In this big bad world Ain't going easy on me I'm still your little girl But you taught me to be strong Now I'm so lonely But I can't cut What my test of many colors What my doctors had to say And you held me in your arms Cause you knew I was scared They said something wasn't right And I might lose my long hair Daddy, don't cry I need you to be strong Cancer is an ugly word and you thought I was Hello and welcome back to this edition of Minstrels on the Block with special guest Kaylee Hammock. Now, earlier, I believe it was the first segment, you mentioned uh, that you had a, a song about Elvis. And uh, apparently there's a story behind that, so tell us what the story behind that is. You know, sometimes you'll find inspiration for music in crazy places you would have never looked. And um, I was actually cleaning up my closet when I found the inspiration, but I found underneath some of the boots on the shelf, I pulled it back and there was a newspaper wrapped in a plastic bag. And I opened it up and it was dated August 17th, 1977. And it said in big black bold letters, the king is dead. You know, at that point, I, I didn't really know much about Elvis. You know, he was before my time. And I knew he died, but I didn't know what from. So I started researching it. And the sad part is that he had a drug problem. And the bodyguards knew. Everyone knew that was around him, but no one tried to stop him. The, bo the bodyguards wrote a book about it instead of trying to stop him. And he tried so hard to get that book to not be released, but... It, they released it anyways, mm -hmm. confessing all of his deep, dark secrets that no one else knew. And in one step, they could have tried to stop him. They could have let him live longer if they just tried. But no one did. We sat and watched him waste away. So I decided to write a song for him. Very cool. And that, that's, we don't get a lot of that. That's, that's cool. Very cool. Now, going from that somber thing to something a little less somber and more celebratory, <laughs> this is the part of the show where we pimp stuff. So, <laughs> so let's tell everybody out there where they can find you, your CD, where they can get it, where they, you know, everything that, that will do you good. Uh, the one thing a musician needs is a fan base. And the bigger the fan base, the more noticeable I am to record labels and different things like that. So I would really, I would love if anyone that had a Facebook could possibly look me up at Kayleana. It's a, um, it's a fan page. I put all of my music on there. Um, just go to Kayleana and like it. You can go through all of my music, interviews, um, photos, anything. And you can keep in touch there. Um, I also have Reverb Nation, YouTube, Kayleana Hammock. Um, any way that you can reach me on the Internet, do it. I, uh, follow me on Twitter. I have a lot of different Internet things. But um, 
that's about it. You can contact me at kayleehammock at gmail.com for booking or even if you're an aspiring singer and you just want some advice. You know, that's one thing that you always want to look for, some advice from anyone, you know, even if they haven't done as much as you. If you just have a question, I'd be happy to answer. Very cool. And we're going to come actually to a more specific version of that in just a second. Um, now, generally I ask the, uh, the guest what they think of the local music scene. Now, your local music scene may be a little bit different. And given the place that it is, Ellaville makes me very interested. So tell me about the local, the local music scene that you play in the most. Um, well, if any of y'all know where Ellaville, Georgia is, um, <laughs> we're very rural. <laughs> By saying, you know, just for an example, we, we have a stoplight. So, and it's right beside our post office, and we got a subway. I mean, we're we're moving up in the world, obviously. But um, you know, in a small town, there's not many places to um, sing. So we usually sing at different parties and events. Um, we have birthday parties where we'll just bring in a tractor trailer and have the band set up on top of it. Nice. <laughs> I mean, it may sound it may sound redneck to you, but. If you give it a chance, it's a lot of fun. And, um, you know, all of us, all we worry about is having a good time and having fun with our friends and family. So I play a lot of different parties and events. And um, I actually sing for Jimmy Carter some, President Jimmy Carter. Maybe I should say President. Nice. Um, but I sing for his little private events. And uh, Plains has always been a very nice and um, amiable to me. They've done a lot of things for me. And... Um, you know, living in a small town, it has its ups and downs, but I wouldn't trade it. Um, our music scene is a lot of people. Um, Ellaville, from Ellaville, that y'all may know, we have Brent Cobb. He wrote for uh, Kelly Pickler, Luke Bryan on his new CD, uh, Summertime Blues. I mean, Tailgate Blues, I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, also, I mean, we're about... 30, 40 minutes away from where Luke Bryan and Philip Phillips wow. is from. So it must be something in the water. But, um, you know, we have a lot of musicians around, and it's just a lot of fun because everything evolves around music around where I'm from. Very cool, and information that I didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> that is very cool. Now, as far as aspiring songwriters, uh, artists, uh, whatever artistic thing that somebody may want to do but maybe doesn't, they're just starting or, or even not. What advice would you give to aspiring artists in the audience? For songwriters, it is to make everything your inspiration. Force yourself to write. I mean, at night, I write a little bit every single night. And sometimes everyone's going to have good and bad days, just like in a sport. One day you may be shooting hoops the entire time. The next one, you may not make a point in the game. And, you know, it, it comes with its ups and downs, but... Just make yourself write at least a little bit each night. Teach yourself the techniques for songwriting. And for singers, sing into a recorder and listen to yourself. Because to us, you know, all of us listen to ourselves in our heads and we're like, yeah, we're pretty good. We're pretty good. <laughs> but honestly, you never know what you sound like to someone else. Always be nice to people. That is one thing you never want to be mean to someone because you don't know what they could do for you. You don't know how y'all could become friends or they could be like, hey, um, Brantley Gilbert, he's my brother. You know, you never know. And honestly, you never know what, what that person's going through. And just a smile can make that person just, it, it can lighten up their life. So for songwriters, singers, artists, anything that you're doing, just be happy. And if it's not something that you enjoy, don't do it because it comes with its kicks and it hurts really bad when you're rejected and you go through a lot of heck, but you, you know, it's something that comes with it. And if you really love it, you will stay with it. So just keep writing and singing every single possible moment you can. Very, very cool. Kaylee, appreciate you coming onto the show. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of Minstrels on the Block with Kaylee Hammock. I'm your host, Brian Mallard. We do this every Thursday night. On CTV EA. Uh, this next song is it's called "The Stars Went Black," and the reason I wrote this song is because a lot of people write songs about their heroes, but I'm writing about a victim. Um, there's so many people that could have helped Elvis Presley 
it was a drug addiction. When someone's addicted to drugs, they need someone to help them through it. So maybe this will open your eyes to someone else that may need your help, and you just haven't given them the help yet. But this one is called Stars Went Black. Yes, he ran out of love Oh, it was so sad To watch his friends and family All morning for their king and There was no way to bring him back When the stars were